Well, welcome to this video. My name is Carl Bicknell, and today we're going to be looking at Parallel Search and IDEA. This is the uh, first of a small number of appendix videos. The idea of these appendix videos is not to uh, rehash what we've already done, but to consolidate the knowledge we've got so far before we go any further, to add some content to the knowledge we've already got, and to therefore get clarity on the knowledge we've already got. And that's really on videos uh, one to five. So the purpose of today is really to get things uh, clear or to begin to get things really clear. And we're going to do that by answering one of the most common questions which idea beginners ask. And that is, how does the whole thread thing work in idea? It's really rather confusing for the beginner. I mean, you can sympathize, can't you? You've just gone out to the uh, local computer shop, you've bought yourself a, a brand new quad core or even six core computer, and then you're being told that the threads in uh, the engine section should be set to one rather than four or six or however, however many cores your monster computer has got. It is really rather confusing. And what is it with these little dots at the bottom left of the screen? I mean, why not just have one engine running on your computer? I mean, after all, that was the way it always used to be done. Why are things so different now? Why is there suddenly two dots or four or um, uh, even more? I mean, <laughs> sky's the limit. It just goes crazy in idea sometimes. What's going on? Well, today we're going to try and answer that, and we're going to try and explain the way things are done, and hopefully that will provide uh, clarity on this issue. In the old days, you used to have a computer, and the computer used to have a processor, and that used to run one instance of whatever engine it was you were running. Today, uh, who knows what's going on when it comes to IDEA? Well, it's all about parallel search. And the basic concept is that as you add more cores to work together to search a position, the search efficiency drops, it goes down. And therefore, IDEA does not use parallel search in that way uh, because it is not the most efficient way of doing things. And I'm going to try and illustrate that with uh, an example, um, and hopefully that will make things clearer for you. I want you to imagine a beautiful desert island. On this desert island, there is buried treasure. And this treasure is worth a fortune. If you found this treasure, you would be, you would be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Lamborghinis, Ferraris, they would be uh, easily obtainable. And women would throw themselves at you um, because uh, they would find you so desirable. You would want this treasure. To that end, you hire an explorer to find the treasure. This man is a professional. He's got all of the kit. Uh, binoculars, a magnifying glass, he's got charts, he's got maps, he's got little shovels so he can uh, dig holes and um, uh, take soil samples and all the rest of it. He's really good at his job. Now, taking a look at the desert island from a bird's eye point of view, <coughs> so we can see the island as a whole, reveals that it's... Um, it's pretty big, and on average, our explorer will take one year to search an island of this size to find the buried treasure. Got it? One explorer takes one year to find the buried treasure, on average, of an island of this size. That's how long he takes to search. Now, Here's a simple question for you. If the explorer takes one year to search one island, how long will it take him to search four islands? Well, of course, it's going to take him four years. I mean, after all, GCSE maths does come in handy. But four years is quite a long time if you're going to search your four islands and get all this buried treasure so that you can have, I don't know, four Lamborghinis, four Ferraris, four mansions and four wives, whatever it is you want. How can we speed up the search? How can we make things quicker? Who knows? Well, let's see if we can have a go. One thing you could do is you could employ another explorer. 
If one explorer takes one year to search one island on average, how long would it take two explorers to search the island on average? Now, before you answer that question, there's something about these explorers that I have to tell you. And that is, although they look very similar, and although you might think that they have come out of the same mould and they're, they're actually identical, these two explorers are actually crucially different. The point is that one of them speaks only English and the other one only speaks Swahili. These two explorers don't get along very well and often they are oblivious to what the other one is doing. They are both professionals, they are both equally good at their job, but they're not great teammates. So, therefore, it does not logically follow that if we add a second explorer, the time will automatically drop to six months. It will certainly be quicker than if we had one explorer but it will not be twice as quick. And the reasons are fairly obvious. If they don't get along too well, I mean, it could be that they just overlap a little bit on their search. It could be that uh, one explorer searches part of the island and then the other explorer comes along and he starts searching um, a similar area or an overlapping area, in which case he will introduce redundancy in his search. He will not be um, operating at peak efficiency. Because if they were totally efficient, they would just divide the island in half and one would search one part and the other, parts, the other explorer would search the other. But because they don't communicate very well, there is inefficiency in their search. Another example could be that the uh, explorer at the top, he might um, go to the top of the island there and search around and he might conclude that actually further search is unnecessary because the, the ground at the top of the island is just so hard, it's so rocky. Nobody could possibly bury treasure up there. The explorer at the bottom, however, unaware of the first explorer's findings, decides to go and search the top of the island anyway to see if it's worthwhile. And it takes him considerably longer to come to the same conclusion. In which case, of course, his search was totally pointless because it's already been refuted by the first explorer. There are several reasons you can see why these two explorers are not going to be twice as quick as one working on their own. Now, there is a very simple uh, principle as, as to how this applies to chess. And basically, for every doubling of cores you have where an, uh, an engine is spread over, uh, uh, is running on uh, two cores, so you've got one engine running on two cores, for every doubling of cores, you will get a an effective speed up of 1.7 times. And there's a, a table which shows how this works. One core is our base speed. Two cores brings this up to 1.7 times. And then every time we double, it gets 1.7 times faster until eventually <coughs> you get to 16 cores and it's just over eight times the speed of one core. Now, an engine running on 16 cores, let's say Ribka running on 16 cores, is eight times faster than it would have been on one core. And that is pretty impressive. But it's not 16 times faster. There's quite a lot of inefficiency in this, uh, in this speed up. And that's a real shame. So let's go back to our island. One explorer takes one year on average to find the buried treasure on an island of this size. How long will it take if we add a second explorer? Well, actually, there's uh, some maths which we can use, which we've just discovered, which will help us to work this out if we follow through with the chess um, image. Two explorers are 1.7 times faster than one explorer. So all we have to do is to divide 12 months by 1.7 and you end up with seven months. On average, if these two explorers are placed on the island, it will take them seven months to find the buried treasure. That is quite a lot faster than one explorer working on his own, but it's not quite twice as fast. Question for you. How, we, how are we going to get the buried treasure on these 
four islands as fast as we can. Let's suppose, for the sake of argument, that you go crazy, and instead of employing one or two explorers, you really decide to go for it, and you decide to employ four explorers, because you really want to get that buried treasure out of all four islands as fast as you possibly can. How long is it going to take to get round all of the islands? Well, let's see if we can work it out. On the table, four explorers search 2.9 times as fast as one explorer. So 12 divided by 2.9 equals four months per island. That's pretty decent. And if they therefore go from island to island, on average, it should take four lots of four months, which is, of course, 16 months to search all four islands. Now, 16 months isn't bad, but can you think of a way, perhaps, of speeding this process up so that we get the job done faster? Of course, the best way of doing it would be to split the explorers up. So we could send this guy over here, he gets his own island, this guy goes up there, he gets his island, and this one goes up there. That way, each explorer has got their own island, and we already know that each explorer takes 12 months to find buried treasure on their island, which means that all four islands can be searched in 12 months. That's faster than 16 months. And that, in a nutshell, is why we allocate things the way we do in IDEA with one engine, one explorer, if you like, running on one core, searching one position, one island. In the old days, your computer used to have a processor. And that processor used to run whatever engine you ran on it, and it was as simple as that. More modern processors have um, cores inside of them, which are kind of like little processors in their own right. For example, it's quite common to have a, a quad-core processor, which means it's got four processors within the main CPU. And that means that the most efficient way of doing things is to have not one version of the program running in IDEA, but four, each one running on its own core. I hope that clears things up. Uh, I hope that sheds a little bit of light as to the reason why each engine is only running on one thread, one core, and hopefully that will make um, more sense later on as we talk about adding more hardware to the situation and so on. Thank you for watching.